Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about Reluctant Immortals by Gwendolyn Kist. Hopefully I am saying that correctly. This is from Saga Press, and it, uh, which is part of Simon & Schuster, it looks like. This is a book that I've been looking forward to for quite a while. As soon as it was announced, uh, Gwendolyn Kist originates, I believe. Let's see if that's how they put it. Uh, originally from Ohio. Yes, so I've got to support the Ohio authors. Come on. Uh, but I'm a fan of Gwendolyn Kist. Once once this was announced, it, it's been on my Amazon wish list slash reminder list for a long time. And even though I don't normally pre-order... Um, and I, I still don't pre-order like way, way, way ahead of time. But I did pre-order this a uh, little bit before it actually came out. Um, anyone care to know why I don't tend to pre-order things from Amazon? Because I typically just use a debit card. And when I pre-order, it messes up my bank balance. It keeps throwing me off. Because I take it out of my thing. Whatever you call my bank, my checking account register. Uh, but Amazon doesn't take the money until it's until the book ships. So if I pre-order six months ahead of time, for six months, I think I'm missing $20 or whatever. So I typically don't pre-order. This has nothing to do with this book. I'm tired. Pardon me. Anyway, but I did just a little bit ahead of time pre-order this because I was looking forward to it. What is it you want to know? Why are you rambling about your checking account? Well, let me tell you. Uh, this book, the main characters in this book are Lucy Westerna from Dracula and Bertha Mason from Jane Eyre. A little ta- tangent here. I have been saying for decades that Jane Eyre is the most boring book I have ever read. I have not gone back and reread it to see if I've, I'll change my mind, but there you have it. And I do not remember the character of Bertha Mason whatsoever. Uh, but for those of you who might not know, Lucy Westerna is the first victim of Dracula that we are aware of. Uh, he's gone to England. She's best friends with Mina. And uh, he kills her. She's the bloofer lady. And she ends up getting... The, our heroes have to stake her. And Bertha Mason is the first wife of Mr. Rochester before Jane Eyre comes along. She's apparently insane and locked up in the attic. So this book takes place in 1967. And Lucy and B, as they call her, uh, are, are our main characters. They are both reluctant immortals. Lucy... Uh, didn't die. She can't die. Um, if she gets, well, I'm not going to get into all that. But and Bertha Mason also is an immortal, <laughs> and they've been uh, they they met over in England. They became friends. They ended up coming to America, moving to Hollywood, and uh, Lucy. How much of this can I talk about? Well, all right, let's just put it this way. Um, Mr. Rochester and Dracula are our main antagonists. Um, So the book starts out in Hollywood. It's going to move up to San Francisco for a big chunk of the book because that's where uh, the bad guys are. That's where things are going to happen. Uh, Our narrator is Lucy. It's in first person. She's the one telling us this story. And uh, it's, man, this is a really good, all right, I'm just going to tell you right now, five out of five stars is what I gave this book. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. It does say somewhere here, it says something about, you know, it's gothic kind of, well, it says for fans of Mexican gothic, uh, which is a great book. But it is a very much, very much a gothic novel. 
Uh, so I expected this to have that gothic kind of feel. And it does in places, but it's much less gothic than I expected it to be. Um, the, the characters, Lucy is a great narrator, and I like the way that uh, Gwendolyn Kist has built her story. Uh, you know, taking her from a small, a secondary character in Dracula and made her the hero of this story and given us... Uh, and I like the idea that, as Lucy says, it's essentially the idea that, you know, history is written by the victors and Lucy is basically, you know, the story that most people know is not the true story. This isn't actually the way it happened. But, you know, men, the people that survived, they're the ones telling the story. But it's kind of the same thing with Bertha Mason. And this is a world where Dracula is a best-selling novel written by Bram Stoker and has been made into movies and TV shows and all that. Same with Jane Eyre. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's our world, for lack of a better way to put it. Uh, um... And, but the, the, both characters, Lucy and Bertha slash B are really well wit written, uh, really fleshed out, given their own true history. Um, I guess purists might not like it, but hey, these are fictional characters that have been around for a long time, a little bit of revamping isn't necessarily a bad thing. Not when it's well done, as it is with this. Plus, I just love that cover. So bright and colorful. Uh, and it, it evokes. It's, it's you know, they end up in San Francisco, the Haight-Ashbury Haight area in 67. This very much has that. There's a lot of hippie vibes going on, for lack of a better way to put it. And the cover evokes that. Uh, but there is some serious horror in here. There's a lot of emotion. There are characters that I feel I feel for uh, that I never would have expected to get all choked up about. Uh, but there are a few moments. There are characters that yeah that, that there there are twists and turns not just to the story itself but to the, some of the character arcs. And I was in for it. I flew through this book despite working. 10 plus hours a day. Um, I found, I made the time to read this. <coughs> Excuse me. There's, there's one tiny little thing. It's a little weird to me. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, but it just, it's a, it's a, a Gwendolyn kissed invention a, a twist that she puts on certain lore that seems odd to me. And that's maybe the only, that's barely a negative thing to say about it. Um, it's so well written. It's such an interesting story with, as I said, there are twists and turns. There's, I, I don't want to talk about any details because I really think you should read this for yourself. I, I love seeing Dracula in this book. I love the way he's portrayed. And although I always picture... I always picture Dracula as the Marvel Comics Dracula. Um, let me see. This might be a little too dusty. It is very dusty. So hopefully you'll, you'll pardon my poor housekeeping. But I do have this. This is... This is the Dracula that I picture. <laughs> there we go. We get to see his face. There. Oh, you see so much dust. Um, yes, this is my Marvel Comics Dracula. And, yeah, that's, that's how I picture him. That's how I pictured him in this book. <laughs> Another little tangent. But I love the depiction of him, his character, and some other... I'm not going to mention some of the surprises that pop up. 
but I enjoyed every single one of them. Um, five out of five stars. Reluctant Immortals. Gwendolyn Kissed. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, I actually just picked up a book of her short stories today at Barnes & Noble. I have other of her books. Uh, and as I said, always excited when an author's from Ohio, even though she doesn't live in Ohio anymore. But I believe she's from the Cleveland area. She could have been a neighbor. But anyway... That's, I, I don't know what else to say. As always, I don't want to give things away, especially when it's such a good book. Five out of five. Beautiful cover. Wonderful story. Reluctant Immortals. Gwendolyn Kissed. It's barely a week old at the time of recording. I was super excited to finally get it and read it. And I was not disappointed. And I think you should get it and read it as well. My question for this video, uh, what do you think when authors take older intellectual properties, for lack of a better term, and put their own spin on it? Uh, you know, Dracula's been done many, 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 many times. Sometimes it's good. I love Dracula in the Marvel comics. Uh, I like him in most of the Hammer films. I'll admit, I am not a fan of, uh, is it Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula? Not a fan of that film. Um, but I do like, I, I like to see people put, if it's well written, it's always the same thing with me. If it's well written, if it's entertaining, I like to see people put a new spin on old characters. Um, but what do you think? Do you enjoy that? Do you want to see a new take on Dracula or Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster or, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, that kind of thing. And I'm not talking about the themes of those books. I'm talking about the actual characters and I'm not talking about mashups like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies which is just basically rewriting that book, but throwing zombies into it. I'm talking about something like this, where it takes those characters, gives them a bit of a twist, brings, in this case, brings it up to the modern day, well, the 60s. So, not quite the modern day. Um, what do you think of that? Do you enjoy that? Do you think these characters should be left alone? Or, like me... Are you just looking for entertainment, a well-written story, um, something that might might tug at the heartstrings as this did? Um, so are you, you know, do you want to see that? Do you want it left alone? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Please like, share, and subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Rona5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is ericsmith5757. That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That's all I have for you. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.